Let's get it. Welcome, everyone, to the Way Back Wednesday podcast. I am Lance Falitongo. And I'm Seth and M. And this is a nostalgic podcast conversation about 2001. Hey. What we gonna do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. This was uh, this this was uh, suggested to us, right? Yeah, shout out to uh YouTube user Sasa House. Yeah. Um who's always tapping in, letting us know which of our lists are better and um, commenting on the YouTube videos. Uh also suggesting this year, 2001 as a year that's far enough back that uh we'd remember it. We're still a little older when we at the time and also uh it's stocked with a lot of good movies, TV shows that we're going to be hitting. Um, so yeah, shout out to Salsa House and uh, tap into those YouTube comments or DMs. Let us know what you guys think about the lists, about the show. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I say this every every time we do a year, but I'm like, this is the greatest movie year of all time. <laughs> <laughs> We've done 1994, 1999, <laughs> now 2001, and yeah. very surprised by all the uh, the entries and and movies that came out uh, in that <laughs> year. Wait, I didn't write any TV shows. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, you just do, you just do movies. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So uh I think I went first last time, so you can go first this time. I went first in the Disney song draft. Uh man, you got a lot of votes for your list on our uh Instagram post so far. Come on. Uh but we'll wait for everyone else to, <laughs> to tap in <laughs> and vote before we close that. Uh, yeah, definitely check out the comments. Follow us at WBW underscore pod on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, tap in, let us know. But I got the first vote last week, so. I, 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 I uh, got a lot of votes, and I went second. Just want to just, <laughs> just throw that out there. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just throw that out there. Any Anywhere I start, I finish. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere I start, I finish. All right. But if I start the beginning in 2001, I'm not mad. Let's go. <laughs> First pick to you, good sir. We're going to do five five picks. Yeah, five picks each. Yeah. And then we'll post that up and see uh, what the people are thinking. Yeah. So, yeah. I first. mean, let's just save them the trouble, bro. <laughs> let's just save them the trouble, bro. Let's just, you know what I'm saying? All right, man. First pick in the movie draft, 2001. You can't go anywhere but. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Wow. Can't, can't go anywhere but that. Your wizard, Harry. Car <laughs> crash. James and Lily thought in a car crash. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. The you beginning of the Harry Potter franchise. Yeah, but the real Movies. ones, we was here in the books. You know what I'm saying? We was here yeah, with yeah, the yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my third grade teacher, Miss Hanson, for introducing me to Harry Potter. Uh, when I was in the third grade, I she she was like, "Oh, you should read this. You, you write a lot of fiction. You might like this." And I read it. Oh, nice! And yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been read the next seven books. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah, Harry Potter. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Um. Uh, even Hogwarts Legacy, the, the the video game that came out, that much yeah. of fun. Um. Yeah. I mean, the start. It was, it was, I mean, the genesis of just the, the greatest movie franchise of all time, besides maybe Star Wars. Um, yeah, I, I reading the book and then watching the movie later on, um, like, of course, the book is going to be more detailed, so you, so you always are going to like the book better, but, but the Harry Potter movies were like really good. Yeah. Compared to a lot of other uh, book to film adaptations, like the Harry Potter movies to me were super accurate. Um, the characters yes. were super what like they casted really well. Um, and then the story is the story. I mean, you know, who doesn't like a good old underdog? I'm a, you know, I'm a nobody kid. And come to find out, actually, you're just this super celebrity guy that. A part of a world that you don't even know. So, like, yeah, I always, I, you know, I was a loser kid growing up. So I was waiting for them to be like, actually, you're a wizard. I'm still waiting for my letter in the mail from a, from a, from an owl. You know, you're a my, wizard, Sefa. I think the owl got stuck in a tree or something. Uh, but yeah, man, shout out, yeah, 
Harry Potter, my first pick. How about you? Did you like Harry Potter? I loved Harry Potter. Definitely uh, read the books and then was super excited when they announced a movie and they brought in what, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, Rupert Grint to play our uh, trio of Harry, Hermione, and Ron. I mm-hmm. uh, feel like, you know, the casting, exactly like you said, definitely mm-hmm. on point, fit the, the the books. I feel like those first movies, maybe the first and second ones, were really book accurate mm-hmm. before they started getting a lot more uh, movie, like branching off and doing different uh, different ideas. With well, it. And, and the first two books weren't that they weren't that big. Right, right. You know, it wasn't until like Prisoner of Azkaban, every, then the Goblet of Fire. 300, that, that 400 was, pages. <laughs> the, Goblet, the Goblet of Fire was huge. So like, it's understandable. It's, you know, they started having to pick the most important details. And the book, <clears throat> an important thing about the book is you get that like internal dialogue a lot. Mm-hmm. You can see what like the person is thinking. In movies, you can't. You only get what they do and what they say. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you have to like oh maybe he's feeling a little conflicted about this but you don't really know when you read the book it's, you get that like firsthand right first row up close and personal uh, look into the decision making unless the, the author doesn't want to include that but yeah the books amazing that first movie definitely a, a big one for all of us that's a great uh, way to start us off 2001. I'm also going to go a book adaptation that turned into a huge franchise. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The Fellowship of the Ring. You got to. Uh, Yeah, the uh, Frodo, Samwise, uh, Aragorn, freaking Boromir, all Legolas, Gimli, all all of these characters coming together to try to defeat evil. Uh, Mm -hmm. Filmed in New Zealand. Shout out to uh, Aotearoa and the Pacific. Uh, I'm trying to use the Pacific. This was, I'm trying, this trying was to do that. How far I'll go. <laughs> uh, this, you know, this movie definitely spawned a bunch of uh, sequels to finish out uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's books mm-hmm. of uh, The Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, Return of the King, and then also the, the Hobbit franchise came years after this. But this was our introduction to Frodo, Gandalf, um, and that first third of the journey. Uh, on the way to Mordor, and I think it sets up a lot of those relationships, dynamics, tensions for the the future films. Great, and it was like t- two and a half hours long, so they jam packed oh, yeah. a bunch of stuff into each one of these movies. But this first one uh, broke records; everyone, you know, loved it. Went big, uh, continued on. So that's my pick for for number one. You watch uh, Lord of the Rings at all? All right, man. I, I always sound like I'm hating on your picks. <laughs> <laughs> and I might be. And I might be. I might be. But um yeah, I did I did watch Lord of the Rings. Um I definitely and, preferred Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings yeah, at the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah at the time, still. <laughs> at the time. Oh. Um I did I did watch it. I liked it. Um I like to do with the with the air is it Legolas, the dude with the bow and arrow? The elf, yep. That was my favorite dude. That dude was hard. Smooth. Um, yeah, I, I watched it, but I didn't really get into it like that. True. Um, what I really got into was the video games. So there was okay. a PS2. I think it was the Two Towers or something like that. The Twin Tower. I don't know. Or we were since that. But the two thousand one. It was okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I mean, to the say, two towers. Is that what it's called? The two towers. Yeah, Lord the second Rings? movie, probably the second video game. Yeah, there was a there. There was a man. I wish I could play that right now. I want to play it. There was a um. There's like a the war, right? Mm. And you're oh, yep. and in the game. You're Gandalf, and you have to fight off all of the orcs that's climbing up the wall. Bro, when I tell you I played that level like for hours and it was it was like a you so you had to like do certain things like you had to like I don't know burn the thing so it could shoot the catapult like you had to do those things in order for you to move on to the level but I never moved on I was just sit there and fight orcs for like a (laughs) hundred days straight hundred days hundred nights I wouldn't turn off my PlayStation I would just keep it plugged in and, and pause it and I would just play it every day, bro. 
that was my favorite. Like, I, I want to say out of all the video games I played, you know, like on different levels, mm-hmm. that was the most I've ever played the level. I played that wow. thing for like a month, bro. It was so just fun. slicing orcs down just, the walls, the helm's just, deep. Yeah, you get to blast them. And I don't know. They would climb up the wall and you, I don't know, bro. It was just. And you're Gandalf in this? Yeah. Yeah. You using your magical staff. Magical staff. Magic. Yeah. Nice. They had, and he had like <laughs> different, he had like different powers. Like he had one where you could hit it on the ground and everything around you blows yeah. up. So, um, Lord of the Rings, I mean, it was, I, I watched it, uh, probably one or two times through and it was fun. It was a fun watch. It was long and it yeah, was yeah. kind of scary as a kid, but it was fun. But I really loved the video games nice. a lot. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's my pick for, uh, 2001 movie and show draft. What do you have for your second pick? You know, uh, I had, I have to go with, uh, you know, the, the first time Denzel won his award. You know what I'm saying? Training day. Training day with my second pick. You know, why Denzel had to be crooked before he took it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, training day is about a cop. He's training a new cop. And the new cop is slowly learning, like... And, and, and mind you, Denzel is the veteran cop. And he's, like... Teaching. You know, yeah, he's, he's the teacher. teacher. He's the teacher. But he's like seems so cool and he's like he knows this and that and he knows mm-hmm. everybody and he's like hey you know and the new cop is like slowly learning like wait this guy is not really a good guy like like I want to be and it just it just shows Denzel is, is is one of the most I don't know if he was like praised or whatever or looked up to as a cop but he was definitely he, he had been around the block a few times and come to find out he was crooked. He yeah, wasn't he, all there, but he, he was the leader of that whole team. Dr. Dre, a couple of other guys, and they were all like rogue cops that yeah. were doing their own thing and knew they weren't going to be investigated. So they just did whatever <laughs> they want. They went and robbed a guy yeah. together. That was crazy. Was it, wasn't the dude from Monster Warriors in there? Oh, which one? Or maybe or Star Wars? Wasn't it Cliff Curtis? Was Cliff Curtis in there? Oh say. yeah, Cliff Curtis was Smiley. He was the head yeah. of like the Mexican gang that was yeah, about to in the that Denzel like makes tries to dispose of the new cop. He's like kill mm-hmm. this guy. Yeah, uh, but luckily the new cop was like saved someone's life earlier, and it just happened to be that guy's little sister, Smiley's mm-hmm. little sister. So he's like, "All right, you're out." Yeah, that was yeah. So life so, for yeah. a life, it's all business. You know, <laughs> training <laughs> training personal. day. For sure. One of those movies that we had on I don't know if we had on VHS, but I know I watched it a lot. Um just just yeah, Denzel. You can't go wrong with Denzel. Denzel one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh so yeah, with my second pick, I picked Training Day. You know, did you did you like it? It sounds like you did. Oh man. Yeah, well, I've watched Training Day probably like three, four, five times. Um uh, again, it was two thousand one. I was like eleven, twelve years old, so very mm-hmm. like uh <laughs> trying to find cool people to look up to and like who should be and even if it's like a character or an actor just like it was so like big like Denzel in in training day that it was like you got to try to be like this guy Alfonso or whatever his name was but little little bands it also started started (laughs) little bands it also showed like especially for the LAPD that like you know some of these uh cops or organizations or law enforcement you know isn't always the best or fully trustworthy or fully good so there's all sorts of things where you have to balance and check people in power but i didn't realize that in seventh grade i just kind of started figuring (laughs) that i was like something's weird these are the guys supposed to serve and protect so um just real quick though if you like training day you should check out end of watch have you ever watched that End of watch. I want to say Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yo. Well, and who else was his? It was the. There? It was a dude from, from uh, Ant Man. I think he was Selena's brother in the movie. Oh. Think. Oh yeah. yeah the Ant Man, the guy that drives the van. Yeah. 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 Okay. Man, I forget his name. Yeah, I usually like uh, his roles in in whatever he's doing. And nice. end of end of watch for anybody who's not seen it, y'all should go watch that. If you like Training Day, you'll love End of Watch. Nice. All right. Training day. Great pick. Third overall. We're going to go to my second pick. You got some, I feel like training day covers your actionness of your <laughs> <laughs> list. So I'm going to pass on some other action ones. I'm going to go 
Happy Animation, DreamWorks, uh, the first movie <laughs> in the Shrek franchise, Shrek. <laughs> oh, wait, Shrek came out this year? Shrek won. I didn't see that. Oh, Shrek, my gosh. Donkey, Fiona, Lord Farquaad, all of that. All the fairy tales, the journey to get to. Damn it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Freaking one of the funniest, greatest movies. Definitely spawned a lot of sequels that people have loved over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. But that first one was, it was weird. It was funny because the ogre is the main character superhero in this. Yeah. And he hates everyone. He just wants <laughs> to get, <laughs> let's talk about an, uh, like a, a reluctant hero type. Yeah. Shrek is the pinnacle. Like, I just want my swamp back. And all these fairy <laughs> creatures have been freaking uh, brought over here because they were kicked out. Mm -hmm. uh what is that called the gentrification gentrification <laughs> gentrified into the swamp <laughs> kicked out of their uh fairy tale lands because farquaad is over here trying to grab everybody up uh yeah and he sets out on a journey to save fiona to get his swamp back ends up falling in love and defeating the bad guy uh eddie murphy is donkey yeah. oh my gosh all the bars <laughs> all the little one-liners uh, and funny stuff i feel like this was not peak Eddie Murphy, but at least still up there, probably on his way down, back in the end of his career, but still very vocally funny. All the, mm -hmm. the jokes and stuff like that, definitely. Um, and tapping into all the fairy tales that we knew growing up. Uh, the Gingerbread Man, freaking oh Ogre God. Swamps, Pinocchio, <laughs> all of that stuff. <laughs> all that stuff. So, yeah, definitely uh, taking Shrek uh, with uh, this pick in the 2001 movie draft. Have you seen Shrek? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've heard of it. <laughs> Shrek, Shrek. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that it came out this year. Damn, I didn't see that on the list. I must have skipped it. But uh, that's a great pick. Um, Shrek is hilarious. There's so many points, <laughs> and I don't even know if it's in the first or the second Shrek, but I'm pretty sure the first one is the one I remember. Like he goes to some kind of town or something, and he presses the button, and the little yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turn around and wash my face, <laughs> uh, hands, whatever it was. Um, yeah, I think it was face. Yeah. Um, the, 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 um, do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. <laughs> the Muffin Man! <laughs> that, that was very late. Yeah, that <laughs> mug is so funny. Um, that scene where he's, he's asking the mirror. Yeah. Who's a, the most beautiful of them all? And the mirror looks and he's about to say, not you. And it shows one of the henchmen and it pulls up a mirror and he cracks the mirror. <laughs> comes back, you are you. Lord Falk. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so many instances in that movie that are just classic. And I feel like people our age are definitely going to be like, yeah, this this is one of them. You got you. That's a good pick. That's nice. a good pick. Um, and also the ending. Like, I pers personally, Smash well, yeah, I personally watched that little mashup of all the different songs. Staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> like, like I watched that whole mashup at the end of where everyone's dancing so many times. We used to just, <laughs> we used to put that movie on just like the DVD just to watch that ending part. Like, this so is before YouTube. This is before yeah. the convenience of just look at oh, end of Shrek uh, song mash. Like we couldn't do that. You had to pop in the DVD and you had to skip to the last chapter and then you had to fast forward to the end of the last chapter to watch it. So yeah, I love yeah, I love Shrek. That's a great. That's a great. Thing. That's, that's crazy. Oh. It, it was way before it was YouTube was started in two thousand five. Yeah. And then it's hard to imagine a time before you could just pop on the internet and look up any video you wanted on YouTube. But yeah. hey, that's what we had to do. We had to go and loop it, <laughs> restart the, the chapter. Freaking peasants. We were freaking <laughs> peasants, bro. The hell? We made it work. What were we, we doing work. for the first, what, 12 years of our lives? <laughs> and rewinding manually <laughs> VHS tapes. <laughs> And then you, and then you got, and then you got like our parents and grandparents who grew up like when I Love Lucy was around. Bro, yeah. if you missed the TV show that week, you missed it. There was no <laughs> rerun. Like they literally had no reruns back then. Like if you didn't watch it, you had to read about it or hear about it on the radio. Like there was, <laughs> you, yeah, on the radio. 
<laughs> it was nowhere to go. That sucks. Imagine <laughs> if you sick one day or I don't know, the power goes out and you just miss the show the for the week. Can you imagine you miss the season finale and you're just like, ah, uh, no spoilers. I'm gonna wait until next year. There ain't even no such thing as spoilers. Like you can't do it. It's gone. It's just in the black hole. Oh my gosh. Shout out to shout out to y'all, man. Y'all shout out to 2001 me. and before and way before when you guys had to appointment TV. All right, so Lance, so Lance, Lance got Lance got that. He got Shrek. So with my third pick. <sighs> got to do it, man. I got to do it. Do Rush it. Hour 2. Rush Hour Woo! 2. Yeah. Rush Hour 2. You know, in China, I, <laughs> I should do this. <laughs> in China, I, I, I'm Michael Jackson. Jackson. You, Tito. You, Tito. <laughs> you, Tito. Oh, you mean, my Tito. Tito. Tito's what we ate last night for dinner. Uh, uh, Chinese bamboo, Tito. very strong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I laughed at so many of those jokes. Rush Hour is great. When when it was fighting in the in the um in the massage parlor, mm-hmm. punched oh, him in the man. face. Kada, <laughs> you all no, like. like... <laughs> Oh, no. It's so bad now. Like I try to watch it, and my girl was like, uh, "This is a like I don't like this." But yeah, was, at the time, it was oh my god, it was awesome. Forget. Uh, remember when he ripped off his towel and he looked? You're like, no wonder why are you mad. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, oh uh, man, that that movie, well, the, the, the whole the whole Rush Hour series. Well, I mean, the first two at least. Classic movies. Um, the first one took place in L.A. and Jackie Chan was out there from China, and then the second one took place in China, mm-hmm. and Chris Tucker was out there from L.A. and it was it was a fun little dynamic, like uh, switching of dynamics because now Chris Tucker was the one that was out of you know he was a fish yeah. out of water. Yeah. Um, which reminds me, his scene when he was singing when he was in the club and he was like, <laughs> Chris Tucker thought. He thought that, that he was just going there for vacation. Like he didn't think anything of it. But Jackie Chan had this plan. Well, he was like, he was uh, investigating one of the mob bosses out there in China. And so this whole time, um, Chris Tucker thinks like we just hanging out. Yeah. But they really in like a triad uh, uh, club. Like everyone in the club is gangsters. Yeah. And, but he didn't tell him that. Jackie Chan didn't tell Chris Tucker that. So Chris Tucker moving around like, like just whatever. And he's just like, and hey, they, hey, we're winning a classic. And he was like, what? And there's an Asian guy. He's like, get close. Like he was trying to yeah. sing Michael Jackson, but it was terrible. Jackie Chan goes and he's doing his investigative work and he pops back out. And what do you see? Chris Tucker's on stage. Chris Tucker's on stage singing Michael Jackson, doing the dance moves, kicking his leg up. <laughs> And uh, the singing to part. the girls that have triad bosses sitting yeah. at their tables, like what the hell? <laughs> and then he, and then the funniest part was when he was like, "Come on, come on, Lee, come on, Lee, come, 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 come on, get off the stage, come out, I come out." And he's come trying here. to, he's trying to call him up on the stage, and Jackie Chan is like, "No, you gotta, don't make any, you know." We trying to be undercover. I'll be then, right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right I'll back. Be right. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Chinese gang club. It's like, oh, I knew you was lying to me. <laughs> I knew you was lying to me. <laughs> Yo, he hops up on the stage. He hops back up on the stage. We're going to do this right now. Where's Jutai? Huh? And everyone in the gas fight, they get kicked he, out. He's looking in his book and he's trying to read the Chinese like phrases and he ends up up saying like uh something like bring out your samurai swords and shave your Sacrifice butt and and go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but so so i'm guessing i'm guessing you like, water. i'm guessing you like the rush hour too oh uh, man uh i definitely love rush hour uh the first one um uh, and also the sequel rush hour two i think rush hour three they're uh I, yeah, I actually forget. Paris, I want to say. Yeah, Paris. Yeah. Uh, I tried to get uh, to watch Rush Hour 1 as like one of our like just like hangout movies with me and my girl. And she was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, what? She was Wait, like, she didn't That's... like it before or she didn't like it watching it? I No, even before we started, she was like, uh... 
I it's like, crazy. Oh damn, it switched. This used to be so funny. I used to laugh all the time, and now it's it, like, oh, because I was laughing at like stereotypes of <laughs> races. <laughs> Oh my yeah, goodness. it's 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 kind of crazy, bro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the uh, the quickest hands in the east and the fastest mouth in the west, Jackie Chan, <laughs> Chris Tucker. Thank you for you know making a a funny movie for our childhood that yeah. people aren't allowed to watch anymore. <laughs> my for my third pick, uh, I'm gonna go. Man, this was a really fun movie for me. Um, bounces back and forth. It's in Las Vegas. It's about a big casino heist. Stars George Clooney, Matt Damon, oh, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts. Ocean's Eleven uh, is yeah a movie starting Danny Ocean, uh, yeah. played by George Clooney, and he gets a a bunch of other uh, friends, super ensemble cast, uh, and they're trying to rob three casinos in one night as kind of revenge for uh, Andy Garcia's character, this big casino magnate for taking his uh, George Clooney's ex-wife. Um, but they, they they go through all the planning, all the different skills that they have. They run it. They try to implement it to rob the casino. Things go bad. They have to switch. Uh, but definitely a very exciting, uh, well shot movie, well put together. Feel like it kept everybody on its toes. You didn't really know what was going on. Um, until right at the end when everyone's deucing out in front of the Bellagio fountains after successfully pulling it off. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, fun movie, a lot of great actors. And uh, this is my pick, uh, my third pick for the 2001 movie draft. Um, Ocean's 11, and it also started a franchise, pretty much. Oh, Ocean's 12, 13, Ocean's 8 with the all-female cast. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, um, a great pick, great pick. Uh, I am a sucker for heist movies, for movies that are like super intricate, super like about detail. Mm, um, nice. the ones where like people are are just hella clever and witty, and just well thought out. Nice. I love movies like that. Like um, so Ocean's Eleven was was you know that was a great movie. Uh, I kind of get it confused with all the other ones because they kind of remind me of each other. But, Same cast, robbing people. Yeah. But but like I said, any any real heist movie, like I I love to watch Ocean's Eleven. Uh, they got Rock and Roller from like the UK. That one was pretty good. Um, Seen Snatch, Italian, your Snatch, Italian job, Italian job, like stuff like that, bro. I love it. Nice. Like it's it's so cool how they figure out. Mm-hmm. What, you know, like they kind of like, oh, this is actually, and then you're like, oh, this is the plan, this is the plan, and then the plan fails, and they're like, actually, this was the plan. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> this what? is the plan was, the whole time. You got it. it was in front of me the whole time. <laughs> you know, so um, so yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out to shout out to Ocean. I'm not mad. Shout out to Ocean Eleven. <clears throat> For your fourth pick in the 2001 movie draft. Okay, so I got Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. I got training day. I got rush hour. I don't think you're going to choose my last one. So I got to go. And I feel like you put this off because you thought I wasn't going to take it. <gasps> I got to go fast and furious. No! I got to go fast and furious. <clears throat> I know it's kind of overlapping. Fast and furious one. It's kind of over. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's be clear. Fast and Furious one. The first three were awesome. I think everything else after that kind of you know, but, <laughs> cars start flying, cars start <laughs> going to outer space. <laughs> Fast and Furious one. Fast and Furious was still about cars. Mm-hmm. It was still about realistic things you could do with cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dom Dominic Toretto was just the guy who was driving fast. He wasn't a a super mega mind <laughs> uh, international <laughs> threat on the FBI list. And he wasn't getting recruited by the richest people in the world. He was just the guy with the fast car. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Fast and furious, uh, uh, you know, rest in peace, Paul Walker. Um, it's it, 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 the start of yet another, you know, like the Harry Potter, like the Lord of the Rings, like Ocean's Eleven, yeah. the start of a franchise. And this is like people can say what they want. 
The movies are definitely terrible. I'm not gonna <laughs> disagree with you, but they're entertaining. Sometimes exactly. you mean like you will watch a car crash is bad, but it's entertaining. And I think you that's can't what, look away from it. And and you know what? We're so invested. I'm so invested. I still watch them, even though I hate like I don't even remember. I just remember Jason Momoa was in the last one. But I don't remember anything else. Like I don't remember anything else about it, but I watched it because Hey, it's a new Fast and Furious. I feel like they could make this till the end of time. They could just keep like a up new in one the every year or two. They might as well. It's it's worked for so long. Two thousand one to twenty twenty two. That's twenty one years in the making. Yeah. You know. Um. So yeah, f- first Fast and the Furious recipes, Paul Walker. Forget about it, cuh. <laughs> No, that's part two. <laughs> Paul Walker was walking up there and, and Tyrese was asking the seven. He was like, nah, forget about it, cuh. Forget about it, cuh. I've seen that repurposed for so many things. That's yeah. So so yeah. So we gotta go with that. Fast and Furious. How about you? Are you a fan? Nice. Uh yeah, yo, Fast and the Furious. Like you said, it started off like cars action and then it blew up to like a bunch of like crazy stuff that uh mm-hmm. that kind of followed the storyline. But definitely a fan of those first ones. And also the um Hobbs and Shaw, like The Rock mm-hmm. got a spin-off of Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Um and I also think he's gonna be back in the, was the rock in this last one at all? Do you remember mm-hmm. seeing it pop up? Because I remember oh. I feel like they had he might like have a, been. He might have been. Oh damn. Yeah, and I it was know. just forgettable. Well, no, I just don't remember the movie. I just remember Jason <laughs> Momoa was like there the whole time. He was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think The Rock and Vin Diesel kind of made up. Uh, they they had a really big spat where they were didn't like working with each other and they were kind of mm-hmm. uh, finding each other. And The Rock was like, I'm not going to do any more Fast and Furious movies. I'm going to just do my own Fast and Furious spinoff. But uh, yeah, Hobbs and Shaw, shout out to uh, Fast and Furious. Uh, Dominic Toretto family and, and and you know what I'm I'm in the minority but I really liked Tokyo Drift like yo yeah that was fun too Tokyo Drift was the first Fast and Furious movie I watched for real like through what throughout the whole thing mm-hmm. and then I went back and watched one and two because I like three so much two had that like football player <laughs> I feel like he was in a football uh, TV series or something or movie. Oh, yeah, Uh, I think um, any given. No, Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. Okay. The main character gets like sent out to Japan to live with his his dad because he's messing up stuff and runs into Bow Wow and the Drift King and the whole drifting car scene out there Mm -hmm. in Tokyo and goes from like a muscle car racer to like a finesse around the corner slider glider type. I. Oh, so sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, that yeah, that's what to- Tokyo Drift. Yeah, but uh, that was I cool. I hate how they downplay my guy. <laughs> what do you mean? He's in the other Fast and Furious movies, and he doesn't do a thing. Like he's Ooh. literally the the main guy from Tokyo Drift. Like he's a nobody. Oh, I thought he was in, in the, no other movies. I thought this was no, his only one. He was in the other movies, but he was like the guy who's going to create a car like he never really drove oh, around he's a mechanic in the other one yeah like i'm like wait wait what he this what are you <laughs> kidding me this dude was cold bro he went down the whole freaking uh the the thing to go into the parking garage he did the whole drift oh i see it <laughs> lucas black star of the fast and furious tokyo drift and also reprised his role in furious 7 and f9 Damn, but he's just a mechanic in those ones. He, does, he don't do it. Well, fan I, service. I remember <laughs> one of them. One of them, he just worked on a car, maybe with Bow Wow. But maybe the other one, he dropped. But that they don't put no respect on his name, bro. He's one of the coldest. He's arguably the best, like driver that turns. <laughs> <laughs> he's the drift king, right? He you know, he's the DK. I just don't like how they play my dog like that. So yeah, man. So yeah, yeah my, but he's yeah. not good enough to be in like the regular movies. They just gave him like a side sequel. Man, yeah. you see all the times Vin Diesel be trying to turn and he run into a wall. Man, Drift King could have done that. <laughs> Drift King could have turned and not hit the wall. Man, y'all better put some respect on Drift King's name. I'm here to say it. <laughs> if nobody gonna say it, I'ma say it. Shout you know out man? to the DK. What's that? Shout Donkey Kong. 
<laughs> oh, bro, you need to learn. All right, Fast and Furious. Dang, Fast and Furious one in two thousand one mm. started off the the Fast and Furious franchise. Good pick. I swear, Lance, Lance, get off me. You better not. I got this. <laughs> you better not, bro. <clears throat> I already went DreamWorks animation. I'm gonna go Disney animation. Monsters Inc. Uh, is what, what list were you looking at? I didn't see any of these. Is it? Wait, see now I need to make sure that this is right. Nah, you might be right. I'm just dumb, but I didn't. Uh... Uh, okay, if Monsters Inc. came out in 2001, which I'm hoping it. Yep, 2001 film. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mike Sozowski. Uh, Sully, this is a, we, we travel to the monster world where children's screams are used to, for energy, like a clean, renewable energy for the monster uh, city and world. Yeah. Um, so there are professional monster screamers uh, that go, well, professional monsters that go and get these screams from the children. They have to go through these crazy doors. Yeah. Um, uh, and then once the kids scream, it fills up like a little energy capsule and it powers the city. Um, but one time they let a kid back into the freaking monster world. And mm. uh, yeah, this movie is all about uh, Sully and Mike trying to get Boo back to her world and hide her from all these different places because uh, people are scared of children or monsters are scared of children in Monsters, Inc. Like if a kid touches you, you could die. Uh, is what they're told. So they're definitely afraid of kids. Um, but yeah, this was a, a sweet movie. Um, two friends, definitely with, with different viewpoints. Um, and they have to eventually <laughs> love and take care of this child so that it can get back. And all the while defeating uh, a bad guy and a surprise bad guy mm -hmm. um, towards the end of the movie. So Monsters, Inc. Also a couple of uh, sequels, Monsters University. I think there's a Monsters TV show. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, Monsters, Inc. for my fourth pick in the 2001 uh, movie draft. I don't know how I didn't get an animation <clears throat> this pick. This is this this draft. This is terrible. <laughs> Monsters Inc. is is definitely classic. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mike Wazowski. I feel like I'm watching you, Wazowski. <laughs> I feel like everybody has done that. Like I I don't know why, but <laughs> I don't know why. But ladies that work at the DMV or ladies that work in a window with the little hole at the bottom that you got to talk to, they always look like that lady. Mike was like. <laughs> I, I, every time we go somewhere, I look at somebody and they look like her. I look at my girl or whoever's next to me, and be like my glass ass, and they be like, "Oh my god, yeah, yeah, she looked just like her." Um, so yeah, um, Monsters Inc. You know what's crazy too? This movie was big and it didn't have songs. I think that's crazy because like a lot of other kid movies kind of rely yeah. on the soundtrack. This movie, I don't remember any songs from this movie. But it was so good and captivating, and you know what I mean, like the idea of it was crazy, um, and it was funny. Like Michael Zowski was hilarious. Um, yeah, damn, that's a good pick. I think at the cool. end, at the end, they find out that children's laughter is actually even stronger than children's screams as a yeah. form of like their monster power. So. It even changes their world. This movie even changes the monster world after they start treating kids uh, uh, differently. Did you did you ever dive deep into the the conspiracy world of Pixar? Ooh, oh, I've probably seen uh, some videos or something. But what is the uh, what is the conspiracy? Uh, so there's like like peak, so so um the Pixar movies, they they uh the the creators of them they kind of like throw things in to like mess with people. Um, and one of the, so I think it was Tangled or Brave. I don't know. It was one of those movies, but there was like a lady in the woods and mm. she looked like she was like a witch. She was like a little witch. And she was like, she had a way of just leaving. Right. Like she would just go, she would go through a door and then they'd follow her in and she'd be gone. And so a there was door? That's what I'm saying. Like the door to her cabin, there was a scene where like she walks into the cabin and then the people follow her into the cabin, but then she's gone. And so they're like, what the heck? 
And then also in that movie, there's like a tr- like a like a wooden carving, like it's like a tree stump, right? It's like a like a wooden plate, whatever. And it had Sully carved into it, like literally a picture of Sully carved into it. Oh, nice. Okay. I mean, I know they they've like put in little Easter eggs. Yeah. And then uh, it's all supposed to supposedly all encapsulated in one Pixar universe, like Monsters yeah. Inc. And then a bunch of uh, what other freaking movies? Bugs Life, Toy Story, it's Finding all, yeah. Nemo, Incredibles, Brave, even, even Cars, Toy, even Toy Story. In one of the in one of the Toy Stories, they had kids come in and play with the toys, and Boo was one of the kids. Oh, okay. See, I mean, do you think that's like? just to for for big fans so they can see that yeah i think i think it's just you know people in the writing room and they're just like oh wait we could just throw oh, you got a toy we can throw a toy in yeah. there from our toy story movie or... there's a lot of that there's and there's a ton of videos of people breaking it down and showing uh i get i get you know i get sucked into that type of stuff sometimes. Yeah, yeah yeah i love that yeah especially people doing the uh, the research and and putting it out for us in different forms of content, whether it be YouTube or Instagram, whatever. Um, yeah, that's always dope uh, to see those those breakdowns and how everything ties together. This little part, this little part, these guys I'm, cross over. I'm not gonna lie, Lance, I'm scared right now. Why? You got a hell of a list, brother. Ah, Dang. mine's all right. You got Harry Potter, Training Day, Fast and Furious, Rush Hour Two. Right now, I've got Lord of the Rings, Shrek, Ocean's Eleven, and Monsters Inc. That's a that's a nice list. I need like a <clears throat> action man. There's only one other like movie here as far as action, and one that I watched a lot. Well, uh, well this uh, one I watched a whole lot, and it may not be critically acclaimed it may not be you know it didn't do crazy numbers at the box office the main character it may not be his best work but to me this movie is a classic and i feel like to a lot of people out there this movie is a classic especially our age especially from where we from i don't think you can go anywhere and mention the word and mention the movie hard knock or hard knocks hardball and not you know what I'm saying? Oh, what? Yes. Keanu Reeves? Hardball. G-Baby. Oh. Rest in peace, G-Baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, hardball uh, about Keanu Reeves, who's a terrible gambler. Uh, this dude's <laughs> losing. <clears throat> He's losing money left and right. He owes people money all over the place. And uh, in order to make some kind of stable money, he takes up a coaching position at a, at a baseball like a little Pop Warner baseball team. Mm-hmm. It's in the hood. It's, you know what I mean? You know, little ghetto kids from down around the way. And uh, it really highlights the difference of uh, perspective and, and of life. Keanu Reeves coming from, you know, like a uh, middle-aged white man from, you know, his part of the city going down to the ghetto. <clears throat> and it's just like different, different, culture classes one of the ones that there that stands out to me was when you know he was waiting on something he was like telling the kids you know keep practicing the kids was like oh we can't go we can't go home too late you know the later we stay out <clears throat> the worse it's gonna get in the streets and we, we don't want to be around that and Keanu Reeves is like no no it's fine man just keep practicing and then what happens after practice wow. it's a little too late he, he he goes, one of the kids goes, you know, home, but then all of a sudden all the thugs is outside and the kid is having an asthma attack and he's running back and forth, running back and forth. And, you know, and then the mom comes and talks to him. And, and that's one of the like cultural differences that maybe people from outside the culture don't understand. Like it's rules and regulations to the hood. It's, it's, it's certain, you know, people know certain things like you can and can't do mm-hmm. places you can and can't shop. That, that regular people might not care about or might not know or they don't have to follow those guidelines, but these kids are well aware. Uh, even the scene where they're walking in the tunnel and then they hear the gunshots and they look at each other like Glock. Like they know what <laughs> gun it is based off of the noise. Like watching this movie as a kid, it was it was it it reminded us of us. 
Like it was so cool because it was like, dang, this is kind of like what we do or kind of what we experience or kind of what we're around. Um, so yeah, yeah, hardball. Um, yeah, hardball was was a classic, man. Did you? Did Ain't you... no thing like a game of hardball. <laughs> What's that? They Sammy, Lil Zane, Lil Bow Wow, Lil, Lil Zane. Wayne. <laughs> Dang, that you was know, crazy. They love it when you call me Big Papa. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, a um, lot of so so deaf on the soundtrack. Jermaine Dupree, the Brat, Jagged Edge. Mm-hmm. Did you did you like Hardball? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I probably haven't watched it back a bunch. Uh, but yeah, definitely when it came out, probably a little after seeing Keanu Reeves try to coach them up. Um, and then having to come together uh, at the end after um, G Baby passed away, and that really, like you're saying, it hits him like a culture shock, but it really opens his eyes up. So, yeah, you know, shout out to uh, Hardball. That's a oh, way to close out, Michael Michael B. Jordan, young Michael B. Jordan. Oh, whoa, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's probably one of his like first movies, then. Yeah, it was either that or The Wire. He was on the wire. Too. Oh yeah, All right. One of those. Be more. Oh, yeah. Um, nice hardball. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, for my fifth and final pick. I'm gonna go with uh, 2001's Pearl Harbor. Uh, this was like a two disc DVD set uh, starring Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett. Um, but yeah, in uh, they did that in 2001. Yeah, yeah, he brought up another tragedy when a tragedy struck. <laughs> when the tragedy was happening, it might have been before. It might have been like a summer blockbuster, okay. and then nine eleven okay. happened that fall. But bad timing, Ben Affleck. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett are uh, two, uh, I think, uh, army or uh, navy pilots mm-hmm. uh, in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, um, and this is when America is trying to stay out of World War II, um, but the movie captures just a bunch of people on base uh, and their lives before that uh, infamous day uh, happens in the beginning of September 1942, where Japan brings over um, a bunch of planes and drops bombs there on uh, uh, on Pearl Harbor. And mm-hmm. the people that had to step up um, to scramble to get a defense going um, and to save lives that they could there in Pearl Harbor, and then also the mounting counterattack that launched uh, U.S.'s <laughs> the U.S.'s uh, the U.S. got into uh, <laughs> World War II, and they went and bombed a bunch of cities. Uh, I don't think they showed the like nuclear bombs, but <laughs> uh, uh, but <laughs> I'm not laughing at the movie. I'm just this is the way I'm explaining it. <laughs> no. What? I don't know anyone who's ever watched this movie, bro. Oh, for, oh no. Is this another movie that you haven't watched? <laughs> I've never seen this, bro. Oh, bro. Yeah, we have the DVD at home, so we watched it a lot. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but this, uh, yeah, there's a love story in it. There's a love triangle between the two guys and uh, and one of the nurses. Um, <laughs> Damn, there's, bro, we're at war. Why are you thinking about yeah. Poutine Pie right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so yeah it's uh the way it ends to um where one of them sacrifices his life for uh, you know the other and tells him to keep going and you're going to be the one uh to get back and take care of her and our baby um, wait 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 the guy had a baby with her so I think uh, Ben Affleck and the nurse are dating because Ben Affleck's like the cool Top Gun guy and Josh uh-huh. Hartnett's like the, I'm also a pilot, but not that cool. Uh, him and Ben Affleck and the nurse get together. They have this whole thing. And then Ben Affleck flies away on a mission um, and is presumed dead. So she starts uh, falling in love with Josh Hartnett. Whoa. And, then I, and then I think she gets pregnant, but then they have to go do the counterattack and Ben Affleck, Josh Hartnett leave. And Josh Hartnett's like, Oh man, I'm gonna die. And Ben Affleck's like, nah, bro. She didn't tell you, but she's pregnant. You guys are gonna have a baby. You got you're gonna be a father. You got a kid to go back. <laughs> and Josh Hartnett's dying in Ben Affleck's arms, and he's like, nah, man, you're you're gonna be a father. You make sure you get back there. You take care of our family for us. Bro, I'm crying right now. <laughs> 
no. Um, yeah, and they're uh, yeah, and the the movie ends shortly after with Ben Affleck and the nurse taking care of a baby after all want, those bombings and stuff. I want I want to say this real quick. This has not well. This has something to do with the movie, but this is like a total like. I think this is a poly ticket topic, but we gonna go here. That that was a. I don't think people understand that that was the the general consensus of those days. Like, if a dude were going to war, he mm-hmm. would tell his brother, "Hey, if I die, I need you to marry my wife and take care of my family." Like, I don't know where the shift Damn, happened yeah. to where we get real territorial and like this is my woman, this is only my woman, but like. I'm sure if you look in your family's history, especially if you have family who went to war and stuff like that, or family that died in war, like the people who are married were probably with uh, other people's, <laughs> like their dead uncle oh. or their dead dad. You know, it was it, and and like I've I've always read about it in like books or seen it in like seen it in a lot of movies. Um, <clears throat> and one of the ones I remember is. is it's Boy Meets World. There was an episode where, like, they were back in the day and whatever, and the guy in the Corey was like, "If I die, Topanga, you need to marry Sean so Sean could take care of you and all that." Like, and that's really how it was. Hey, and I know in so- wartime when people are dying and there's no like life insurance set up or anything that's, like that. That's that's real love right there. For real, that's real love right there. You like, I want my woman to take get taken care of, and my brother has the similar qualities that I do and I know Mm -hmm. he's a good man he's gonna take care bye that was it nowadays it's like if I die you gonna be single for 48 years (laughs) you will never look at another man again like no it's it's so I I don't know bro I don't know man I don't know when people got all territorial selfish and I'm saying like it's it's I don't know it's something to be looked at I Did mean, people... I, I guess, like, I'm thinking about that right now. Like, does that apply to to my personal situation? Like, if I was going to go to war and I was like, yo, I mean, all I would want, right, since I'm worried about me passing away and never seeing my family again, is to make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah. So, like, I guess in a wartime thing, that's probably, like, an even, like, it makes a lot more sense to people. Like, yeah. this could be the end, and I just want to make sure that the family is provided for. But also, like... You ain't gotta marry her. Like it's up to her. <laughs> like it's up to like. I mean, you could. That's your if you ego. Guys, if That's you, your no, ego. No, if you guys decide together to get married, then go for it. But also, yeah, if I, I could just like tell some of my closest friends, like, and they've already told me, man, bro. I mean, there ain't no war happening. But if anything, bro, happens you got to you, wives. Would... You got wives lined up. <laughs> no, if we there ain't no war happening. But if anything happened to you, bro, we would take care of your family. And that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> like freaking, I don't know wh- when recently, like, but my Instagram page started coming up with like morbid truth <laughs> and like showing me all these people dying and stuff. I'm like, yo, what are you? yo, that would be weird if like four <laughs> of your homies separately came with you. Hey, man, if you ever die, we're gonna take care of your family. It's like, bro, do y'all know something? <laughs> <laughs> it's something going on. What's going on? I gotta, I'm about to die. Sticker on my back or something. <laughs> I'm just, no. I, yeah. I, I yeah, thought that's you, interesting. I thought you was gonna say people came up to you telling, you, "Hey, if I'm gone, Lance, I want you to marry my wife." <laughs> no, 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 no. The other, <laughs> the other way. But yeah, also like if if one of your homies died, you'd like would just take care of their family without having to be married to their woman. But I mean, I don't know, man. You work you you working double shifts to give money to a chicken. <laughs> that's it. Like I don't know. No, Some, no, no, no. I'm not paying like, for everything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Imagine, just imagine, like having to provide for her, but then also trying to provide for your girl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I don't know. I think his relationship life is his love life is just going to falter because <laughs> I'm taking care of my brother's family. This guy has seven kids and went to war. And we are died. all living together, and we are cutting costs, and we are yeah. going to make it work. I wonder, yeah, I just wonder, I wonder when the shift happened between, A, if I die, take my girl, and A, if I die, my girl better not look at another man for the next 50 years. I don't, I is that, is Which that one? consensus now? What, oh, bruh, are you kidding I me? don't think so. Wait, what do you think? You, you think if people, if people were to die, you think they'd be like, I want you to be with someone else? 
Yes. I, no, 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 no. I want you to be. I want you to be my brother. Yeah, not uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that, but not like the. Don't ever get in another relationship or be with someone ever again. I, I, I know all women think like that, or like most women think like that. Uh, I mean, I, I think is that ego though? Like for the person, it, like I don't, I don't ego. want you to to like have anything better than me. I want to be seen as the best thing ever. Yeah, and also ego. like you can retire after me. <laughs> yeah, that's ego. That's ego. <laughs> uh don't don't do that do what's best what, do what's, what's best what? for the situation when and when you're dead it doesn't concern you anymore yeah. <laughs> like you're gone <laughs> you're gone the people living have to make these choices and decisions but i mean nah, wow, I, that sucks if everyone's like don't ever <laughs> don't you dare remarry no uh, you know what about say. it what about you don't you <laughs> <laughs> Who me? Like if I go, yeah. my girl. Nah, my girl. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> she can do. She go. I, I had no yeah. say in the matter. I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, especially if I go early. Like I don't want to put this out there, but if I go early, then for sure, go ahead, get your. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Do you, man? If this twenty fifty. <laughs> yeah, if we like seventy, we like don't be on the golden bat. That's the golden bachelor. Don't be. <laughs> If we like sixty eight and I'm gone, don't be on the golden back. Like you, your time is gone. Like you, you chilling. Like you, what do you need? What else do you need? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Physical Uh-oh. intimacy. Before we go, the golden bachelor, bro. How you think she won? How you think she won? Because it was going the whole other way. You watched the golden Tennessee bachelor. Suite. I watched the last episode. Oh, I watched my. like the first two episodes and then the last episode. No, but no, I think I Teresa knocked his socks off. Is what I think happened. I think because... the other girl. The how did the other girl die? Because she. That's what I'm saying. This dude She's got saying... like from behind. But whatever happened in that fantasy suite, I think that's what uh, changed the the no, decision. Because no. he was definitely going for the first one, and then the next day he was like, actually. I don't know. I'm gonna take this girl for the you rest of You know what life. though? I heard I heard so I heard through the grapevine, which is Reddit, uh that <laughs> that they've been bickering a lot. And they Oh no. Like like now that they're actually living together and stuff, it's been a lot of controversy. No. Maybe it maybe it's just growing pains, maybe it's just something new, or maybe Hopefully. You know. I f- I feel like The Bachelor and some of these dating like uh competition shows are are like twenty percent in like a success rate like they find somebody at the end but they don't always stay together but yeah. that's another that's another topic we can go <laughs> <Shout out laughs> to the golden bachelor i can't wait for the next season yeah but yeah this is our uh 2001 movie draft i got the uh the lineup right here Sepha's list mm. harry potter and the yeah. sorcerer's stone denzel washington's training day jackie chan and chris tucker in rush hour two uh oh yeah wait what am i looking at rush hour two uh fast and the furious mm. uh the first one and then hardball is your fifth pick um and then i got lord of the rings fellowship of the ring shrek oceans 11 monsters inc and pearl harbor for my five so uh yeah we'll Sorry, post man. those up uh, I don't really struggle. Right, we'll, right, we'll, we'll post these up. Yeah, Definitely yeah. comment. Uh, let us know what you which list you think is better, or if you can pick a better TV show movie list out of two thousand one. Uh, yeah, submit your uh, your entry there in the comments or DM us again uh, on Instagram. It's at wbw underscore pod mm-hmm. uh, to find us. Way back Wednesday, and then you can also email us. Um, Waybacktimepod at gmail.com or find us uh, on the Poly Ticket Network on YouTube. Uh, yeah. where you can also find uh, Pacifica Movie Starter Kit, uh, the Poly Ticket Podcast, um, PMSK Review, um, and everything else we're doing all housed under one site, the Poly Ticket Network on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. but uh, anything else before we go? 2001 movie TV show draft? Hey. I'm sorry I had to do this to Lance like this again. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, and also let us know what uh, what other years y'all want us to draft, and if y'all want some changes yeah. to the draft. We we're thinking about changes. We want to make it a little more interesting. You know what I'm saying. Mm. Uh, 
uh, yeah. But other than that, though, nah, my brother, take us out, man. Tap in, tap in. Stay tuned. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. For Sefa M, I am Lance Falatongo. This has been the Way Back Wednesday podcast. Catch you guys next week. Bob. Yeah, Bob. Yeah,